Hello and welcome back to the channel. So the build in this video is going to be a little bit different to what I normally do. As you have seen in some of my recent videos, I've been working on restoring and upgrading a wood lathe. And I have also been on the lookout for wood as well, because I'm going to need that to turn in the lathe once I get it up and running. So I've come across a couple of opportunities where I've received some free wood. And for wood turning, you need to prepare this wood. So the logs here have been cut off a tree. And the problem is, is that they will start to dry out where they've been cut and they dry out quicker from that point and that causes cracking. So what I need to do is actually cut these logs up into the sizes I need and to seal the ends to slow the moisture loss out from the end grain. Now you can see there on the right I've started to chop some of the larger logs up and that was a bit of a hassle trying to keep the log still from rolling around and it was close to the ground and it was, you know, a risk of the chainsaw going into the dirt and dulling the chain. So in this video, I want to build a sawbuck. If you don't know what a sawbuck is, it's kind of just like a device where you can put your log on top of it and you can cut it to length. A lot of people use them for firewood. Now, I don't know if there is such a thing, but I've seen a video on a wood turner's saw buck. And I guess the only reason why it's a wood turner's saw buck is instead of cutting your logs to length, you also need to cut them down the middle or you need to remove the pith from the middle. So there might be a few cuts along the grain that are required as well. And in this image here, you can see that the log can be cut right down the length and the chainsaw would go into a gap so that you're not actually cutting up your saw buck or hitting anything down there. The requirements for this saw buck is that I want to make it out of stuff I already have so I don't really want to spend any money on anything new so I'm looking at you know leftover bits and scraps that I have lying around to build the saw buck. The other thing is, and I guess it's related to the bits that I have lying around, you know, some of these bits are not treated, uh, so leaving them outside in the weather, they will probably not last. So the other requirement is that I want to make it so that it can be folded up or folded out flat so that it can be stored away. Here I have some 4x2s, I think you call them 2x4s in the US, basically a 100 by 50 millimeters. although when it's dressed it's 90 by 45 millimeters, so it's not a true 4x2. And there's some leftover plywood, I think this is 9mm plywood, it probably will be okay or thick enough to be used. And in the container there, I don't actually have any M12 all thread, so I've just found some bits of rod and I'll weld some nuts at one end and I'll thread the other end and that's how I'll make the bolts to hold this saw buck together. The only things that are new are in that container there are two nylock locking nuts. So, I mean, I could have used two normal nuts, old normal nuts that I would find somewhere, but um, I just wanted to use a nylock. It's just so much easier to adjust the tension on the legs as you fold them, and then you can just forget about it and those nuts won't move. When measuring these pieces of wood, I noticed that there were a whole lot of different odd sizes there. So I decided to put them through the planer and to make them all the same size. Now this isn't necessary, I mean if you've got old scraps of wood that you want to make one of these saw bucks with, you know, you could use odd sizes, it doesn't really matter. I already have this machine so I thought I'd just run it through to even everything up. Would you look at that big mess I need to clean up? I really need to make a better chute that can blow the chips into some collection bag or something. Anyway, all those bits of wood cleaned up really good and we're ready to move on to the next part.
Now that we have all the wood cleaned up and planed to the same thicknesses, I've just drawn up the sizes that we need to cut these pieces of wood. So here we need uh, four legs, and I plane the wood for the legs down to 40 by 77 millimeters. I've got some imperial measurements here if that's helpful for anyone. There is a 55 degree angle on the bottom of the leg or on each of the legs and the hole in the middle is basically halfway between the top end and, and this point down the bottom here. That hole will be 12 millimeters for an N12 bolt but you could use the equivalent in imperial as well. Up the top here we have the bits that hold the log and the bits of wood that I cleaned up for that were quite good so they didn't need much to be planed off them. So I ended up with uh, 46 millimeters by 70 millimeters and both of these will be 610 millimeters long. And lastly we need two braces. The braces that I'm using here are the same size as the legs here so 40 by 77 millimeters um, and one of them needs to be 610 millimeters long and the other 530 millimeters long and that's because one set of legs fits inside the other set of legs. Now I start cutting up these pieces of wood and I start with the legs here so I true up the end and then start cutting the angle there and since I've already cut one angle I can just cut another flat there for the second one. So I'll do the other two off camera and then I start working on the shorter pieces. Now with these bits of timber going through the planer they got these very sharp edges on the side so I'm just using some sandpaper to tape all those down and make it easier to handle. These are the pieces all done. So the two on the right, those are the bits that hold the log up. So those are the ones that were a little bit bigger because they didn't need much cleaning up in the planer. The four in the middle are obviously the legs and you can see I've drawn some center lines there so I'll be drilling those next. And the two on the left are the braces. One isn't finished cut yet. So I had an issue here. I started to drill these holes and the MT2 taper dropped out of the spindle and dove into the piece of wood so I had to fix all that up and then I continue on and uh, drill out these holes here. Now I start working on the two bolts that hold the legs together and I thread these bits of 12 millimeter steel rod in the lathe and the nut screws on there quite nicely. For the other end I'm going to drill out these M12 nuts. And they get pressed onto the end of that 12 millimeter steel bar and then I weld those nuts on. And just to tidy it up, I just grind off the end there. And those are the two nuts complete. I do hot blue them a little bit later on off camera. I've bolted the legs together here and that has worked out really well. Now that bit of wood on the ground by the C-clamps uh, is the spacing for these legs. And the issue I have is those two bits of plywood that I have as scraps are going to be too short to use. But I actually have that taller piece at the back there which will work perfectly. I actually have to trim it down about an inch or so. I think that's going to work really well. And that was a bit of a leftover from what you can see in the background on the wall there when I lined the wall with the plywood. So again, I didn't have to pay any extra for that. It's, you know, an off cut from that job. Sometimes you do have to revert back to basics. And in this case, because it's raining outside, I can't use the circular saw out there. And I didn't really want to have a mess in the shop. So I just cut these boards with a hand saw. 
So it's just one cut in half and then both the boards just needed about an inch or so taken down the side of it. I'm going to take all the sharp edges off with a bit of sandpaper there as well. So this is what the sawbuck will look like once it's done. I've just got it all sitting here at the moment, so if it all collapses on me, well, that was actually planned. You can ignore the uh, the spray cans in here and these little props of wood that pop up. But basically your log goes in here. And this gap can be adjusted by pushing the uh, saw buck together. And what we'll have down the bottom on those bottom braces, right down by the feet, we'll have a little bit of chain there and that will hold it in a certain position. One end of the chain will be fixed and the other end will be adjustable so that we can, you know, widen it out for a, a larger log and make it closer together for a narrower log. Now this timber that I was using was a little bit bent as well, so things don't line up properly in some places. So what I'll do is I'll just screw everything together and just try and line it up as best I can. And I did notice that the overall width here is a little bit wider than what these boards are. I cut the board that I had in half, so I'm sort of stuck with that size, but it's probably about five millimeters or six millimeters, quarter inch, too short, uh, which is not gonna be much of an issue. It's just not gonna be flush at the end here once I've finished. So I'll go ahead here and start screwing all this together and then we will almost be finished. As mentioned, some of this timber is a little bit bent, but I know the plywood is square, so I just use clamps to clamp it all together before screwing it. And that kind of straightened those bits of wood out a little bit. Now I'm pre-drilling before screwing in these longer screws in the legs here. I just didn't want the wood to split. I actually screw into the piece that I'm using to align everything, so that's a bit of a mistake there. As I walk past here, I just clipped the tripod and I didn't actually realise it. So I've got my back to it and then down it goes. But there were no swear words, so that was all okay. This is the last brace and I didn't cut it before because I wanted to make sure it was the right size once I get the legs together. So that's cut and then screwed on. Same process here, a pre-drill and then put some long screws in there. Now I have two bits of chain here. The short one is too short and the long one's too long, so I really want to put these together and then cut them in half. So I just cut it with a cut-off wheel, bend it out, put the chain link on, and then that can be closed up again. And I just have the welder turned down low here and weld that back together. Now I find the center and I just cut that link off and then I have the two bits of chain there. I measure out where they're going to fit in here so I need to account for this being able to be folded down flat. So I didn't want them way out on the edge there so I've sort of brought them in a little bit. These screws have been ground down so that the chain fits over them for the adjustment. The last step is the bits that hold the log up. So these are initially 3x2s that have been cleaned up, but I'm putting a bit of an angle on here and that will allow the saw more clearance when it cuts through the log. They're all screwed on through the plywood from the back and I actually put some longer screws through those legs into those bits of wood as well. There it is there, pretty much all finished. 
And as I mentioned, the saw will be able to come down through here without hitting anything. This is how you fold it up. You just take the chains off and it folds down flat. And then you can stand it up and store it away. Having used the saw bucket, it works really, really well. As you saw there, I started with a larger log and then when I moved to the smaller one, I pulled the chains in and made this closer in here. But it does work really well for holding the logs when you want to split them down this way here. So I'm very happy with that. You know, there's only one thing that I would improve on this and that is when the log is getting shorter and shorter, and your overhang is more than what's on the table then of course it's going to fall off the edge here so adding some sort of clamp or something where you can hold the log in the saw buck when it gets shorter there would be quite useful i think anyway this project is now complete so if you did find something useful in this video click on the like button and subscribe and click on the bell if you want to be notified when i make new videos Hope everyone has a great day and thanks for watching.